<laughs> Listo para comer. Oh, look at that. There must be 30 different ingredients <laughs> in this mole recipe. A mucha insistencia porque la resistencia. Muy, muy bueno. I can tell you certainly, there's nothing like this in the world. Good morning. I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm in Oaxaca, Mexico. Okay, hold on. We've got a backup. I need to tell you the full story. So at this point in the morning when I started this video, I desperately wanted to eat some homemade Oaxacan mole negro. The only problem was I had no clue yet how it was going to happen. Our full plan for the day was to number one, hire a van and driver for the day, which we had already arranged the night before, so we can cross that one off the list. Number two, drive to a local Oaxacan village. Number three, go directly to the fresh market. And number four, walk around and find a grandmother or auntie to cook us some mole. From scratch. Yes, we were going to wing it, and I knew very well the risk of failing the Oaxacan Mole Negro mission was very likely. But sometimes when you travel without a plan, you end up having the most memorable experiences of your life. We're now in the van, and we are on our way to a place called Teotitlan del Valle. And that's when things took a turn for the best. quickly stopping to get some gas, but I just gotta fill you in what's happening. When we started off today, we had not, we didn't really have a plan of what we were gonna do. We just wanted to go to Teotitlan del Valle, and we wanted to find especially mole, because they're known for mole around that region of Oaxaca. But we were talking to the driver, our van driver, who's an awesome guy, and he mentioned that he's actually from a village which is very close to Teotitlan, Teotitlan del Valle. And he called his mom, he asked if she could make mole for us, and she agreed. Uh, so we're on our way, we're all we're stopping for gas right now, but we're on our way to go pick up his mom. Then we're gonna go to the market, we're gonna buy all the ingredients for mole, and she's gonna home cook us mole. This is gonna turn into a Oaxacan food mole adventure. This could not be a more perfect location. The house is beautiful. The countryside here is gorgeous. The family is so generous and so inviting. We're on our way to the market now. The actual town that we're in is called Tlacolula de Matamoros, and this is a Zapoteca town, so that's the that's the culture, the ethnicity. Okay, and we have just arrived to the market now. We're stopping first to buy the chilies. Oh man, so many different types of chilies. That's a big bag of chilies right there. Medio kilo de pasta. Un cuarto de almendras. Días todavía. Un cuarto de nuez. Acomodas la cebolla. A ver. Esto que pesa. Esperame. Vegetable section now, we're buying some, some, some tomatoes, some onions, some peppers, some uh, green tomatoes. And they even put bread inside Oaxacan mole. Ten pesos. Okay. Ah, ahí, mole, mole también? Sí. ¿La plátano? Sí. Gracias. 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 El chicken. Chicken. <laughs> sí, sí, sí. Vino a vender. Oye, entero no tiene. Sí. Vino a vender. ¿Me da? No, vine a traer unas cosas que vamos a hacer. Ah. Sí. 
<laughs> We're getting a full chicken to go with that mole sauce. Mole que ya. It's her recipe. Oh, oh, is, is, it, is she a relative? Is she a relative? Yeah. While we're at the chicken stall, we met the grandmother whose recipe we'll be making. It's her mole recipe. And oh, she, she definitely knows what she's doing when it comes to mole. Things just even got better. Hola, ¿es, es listo? Ya, ya está listo. Quiero un, un vaso, por favor. un vasito? Un... Sí, sí, por favor, sí, sí. ¿Con azúcar? Uh, ma... sin, sin, sin azúcar. Ah, sin azúcar. Sin azúcar, por favor. Simple. Gracias. Muchas gracias. ¿Cuánto, cuánto cuesta? Cinco pesos. Cinco pesos. Five things. Maíz, cacao. Sí, maíz, cacao, pisle. Es el, la pisle. semilla que sale del hueso de mamey. Ah. Okay, this is called tejate and it's a traditional drink she uses. There's corn in here and there is chocolate. I'm not sure what all else, but as we were entering the market, she was making it and she was whipping it up with her hands. It was like a thick paste, but now she added more water. So it's turned into a, a liquid beverage, but there's still some like chunkiness on top. This is very interesting. I can't wait to try it. Oh, and I asked her for it with no sugar. She said you could have sugar or no sugar or however much sugar you want. It's really good with no sugar. It's, you can taste the corn in there. You can taste the chocolate. It's a little bit starchy. It tastes like kind of a, a cross between a beverage and a porridge. It's great. Tejate. Muchas gracias. Buenos días. Okay, we made it back to the house. It's time to start cooking. I wanted to just explain that this entire area and this city is known for uh, its Zapotec population, which is the indigenous people of this region of Oaxaca. Tamales Oaxaqueños. Así está. Esto se le llama desvenar. She's getting started making the mole by just first starting off with the chilies. Those are pretty large chilies. She's emptying out the seeds, scraping out the seeds. And in the meantime, we have gotten lucky and she she made without knowing, she made some, some tamales, some loco Oaxaqueño tamales, steamed in corn husk. Let me empty this out. Let me just break up this tamal. Tamale de, tamale de qué? De chepil. De chepil. Oh, chepil is es, this ver, verdura. Es, es, es verdura. Ah. Okay. I am not totally sure what that is. Do you know what it is, Carlos? <laughs> There's a tub of salsa that our driver, our, by the way, his name is Javier. He said this is his favorite salsa that his mom makes. Um, and he said it's picante, it's spicy. I'm going to add on some of this salsa. He said it's spicy. That's good. It's not spicy. Okay. Good. Looks amazing. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. It's it's corn, but it's not it's not like finely ground. It's kind of coarse. You can taste that unique vegetable in there. It's more like an herb, I think. Maybe like a wild herb. Uh, it's delicious with that salsa. Oh, that's incredible. Salsa is a little bit spicy, but just perfect with that tamale. It's delicious. Y hay de rajas, puñetes, de mole. Su nieta. Ah. 
that first type of chili is all ready. We're moving into the kitchen now. They're gonna light the fire and we're gonna get started cooking this mole. And they're making it purely from scratch. All the raw ingredients, or the dried chilies, the dry ingredients, yeah, but everything is from scratch. This is, this, it, this, it's such a privilege to have this opportunity. So she's roasting the chilies now, or just heating them over the comal, which is the, the clay pan over fire. And they're, they're not spicy, uh, but to me, they almost have like a sweet, almost tomato-y aroma to them. Oh. Así ya debe Así de quedar. Es listo. Ajá, ese ya está listo. So she's roasting the chilies until for a few minutes until they shrivel up. Then they look like a kind of like a shriveled piece of leather. Uh, but the aroma coming out, they're slightly charred. I'm already starting to sense that complexity of aromas and flavors that will be part of this mole. No, <laughs> Y un kilo de chile ancho es bastante, como tres kilos, cuatro kilos, más o menos. Mi nervura con eso que me quemé mi mano. ¿Ese es plátano dulce? Eh, plátano macho. Macho. Es dulce. Es dulce. It's a plantain banana. She said it. it's a little bit sweet. I am still unsure how all of this is going to fit together. Chabacano. Chabacano. Ajá. Sí. Almendra. Almendra. Uh -huh. Okay, so for the almonds, she put in some oil into the clay pot and then she's just frying the almonds. Estas son nueces. Son nueces. She just pulled the almonds out of the oil and now she dropped in the walnuts. I never would have guessed the next ingredient in this mole recipe. They're like kind of like cookie biscuits. I and mean, again, she's just tossing in them into the oil, deep frying them just for about 10 seconds or so. That's an ingredient I wasn't expecting. Pan cazuela. Muéstrase lo que tiene adentro. Chocolate. Oh, chocolate. Okay. Y pasas. There's also bread in the mole, and it's a special type of bread. There's some chocolate in the bread and something, something else. Oh, is that going to be fried too? Oh, yes, yes it is. As the bread and as the ingredients are being fried and prepared, uh, something to know about mole is that it's it's one uh, it's a very very well known dish. It's one of the ultimate dishes of Oaxaca as well as in Puebla, uh, and there are mixed uh, theories of how it was invented or how it came about. Uh, but one thing is for sure is that it is a combination of both the local indigenous ingredients and cooking techniques combined with the European colonial influence to create this truly unique blend of flavors and tastes and uh, it, it's an incredibly complex dish uh, using so many ingredients. I mean, if you were trying to even come up with a dish like this, it would be impossible because there's so many random ingredients in it and it's such a complex dish. This is pimienta. Oh, pimienta. Así es. 28. This is some type of pepper that I've never seen before. Next, the next spice is cloves going in. Hey. Okay. Canela. Cinnamon. This is when things are getting more and more complex when they're adding the spices now. So now she's frying some cinnamon sticks. And then we also counted out 
uh, some big, huge, some kind of peppercorns and then cloves. There's gonna be some sesame seeds that go in. Oh, cloves and the type of pepper go in the oil. The aroma of that is insane. Ahora van las pasas. Las pasas. Oh, raisins, okay. Thank you. Oh, those smell really good being stir fried in that oil. As the ingredients are still being prepared for the mole sauce, where they're now preparing the chicken. Uh, so the chicken has all been cleaned and cut up. Uh, and she's just, I think she's just boiling it straight up in water. Muy complicado. Muy interesante, sí. Sí. Y mucho trabajo el mole. Sí, mucho trabajo. Mole is such a complex dish and there's so many ingredients involved and each di each ingredient you have to prepare separately uh, and it's very time intensive and it's such a, it takes a lot of work to prepare and so it's such a, it's, it's so cool to be able to watch the whole process and just anticipate the mole that we're going to be able to eat very soon. Chabacan. Plums. I think some type of plum, dried plum, and then deep fried also. Este es hierbita de olor. Carlos Vargas. It's oregano and some kind of other herb. So basically, the chilies get blackened, roasted, but everything else is fried in oil. Chicken is coming along nicely, nice and slow. Up, she just tossed in some onions and garlic right into the fire uh, to roast. Seeds, white sesame seeds. That also goes into the oil to fry. Man, she has fried like at least like 15 ingredients so far. Sí, porque eso estoy viendo. Les pasamos el chivo. Hierba santa. Ajá. Hierba santa, cebolla, ajo, sal. Cuando vean esto dulce, sal. Separately in the chicken pot. Uh, after just boiling the chicken in water. Then she added in some onions and some garlic, uh, and also a, a type of leaf called hoja santa. And that's gonna create a chicken broth that they're also gonna use for the mole. These are all of the ingredients so far. Look, it's an entire bucket of ingredients. Works so well. <laughs> The onions and garlic finished roasting in the fire and then they're just peeling off that outer blackened layer and revealing just that juicy flesh underneath. And then for the tomatoes, uh, there's two kinds of tomatoes, the green tomatoes and the red tomatoes. And she's again just frying it in the, the clay pot for a little while. That took about two hours to prepare everything. It's now time to start grinding everything together to make the sauce. the sound of that rock on rock but then with the like squishing sound of those chilies in between the rocks uh, and she's such an expert and you can even smell you can really vibrantly smell the aroma of those chilies in there too 
The stone grinder like this is called a metate, but it's very, very time intensive. It would take hours and hours to grind up this entire bucket full of ingredients for the mole. Uh, they're gonna take it to the market where they have a bigger grinder called a molina. Uh, and they're gonna grind everything on that so it'll be a lot faster. Uh, so it doesn't, it, it would probably take until tomorrow if they tried to grind all of that by hand and we don't have that much time. Uh, so they're gonna do that. But in the meantime, we're gonna go to a waterfall which is near to this area because then after that the paste, it has to uh, cook for a while. And then we're gonna come back to eat this just sensational mole. The drive to get here was gorgeous. We came really high into the mountains. It's the views. The rugged landscape is incredible, and we've arrived to the place, it's called Hierve del Agua. It's beautiful here. Hey Mark. Yo. Yeah. It feels like you're on the edge of the earth here, and this is where the water is bubbling. Uh, but the water is not hot, it's just kind of like fizzing, it's just room temperature water. We now hiked over to the main swimming pools. Uh, it's quite a unique landscape. It's almost like a moonscape. Those are some pretty interesting and very unique moonscapes, but I am very, very hungry now. My excitement for eating mole is at an all-time high. Hola. Hola. Hola, hola. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Ya ah. quedó. Aquí ya está el que se le va a echar el caldo. Oh. Over here, this is the paste. And so that was all, wow, you can smell it. So you can see the shimmering oil on it. I'm just gonna taste the paste. Oh, mm. oh wow. That's like unexplainable. It's almost like foamy in texture. You can taste the spices, the uh, the hint of clove, the pepper in there. Hey, like an hour and a half. So they already added the chocolate in there, so we didn't see them add that, but they added chocolate in there. It's almost time. <laughs> Uh, don't stroll or not? Oh, sesame seeds. Good start. It took like five hours to make this mole. They made everything from scratch, starting with the chilies. There must be 30 different ingredients in this mole recipe. And what I love is that the family, they just 
kindly invited us into their house and into their compound, into their home, like we are family here. So what's interesting about mole is that the, they don't cook the chicken within the sauce, uh, but rather the chicken is cooked separately and then the sauce is prepared separately and then they combine the two for the final process right before you eat it. <laughs> wow. Oh wow. I can tell you certainly there's nothing like this in the world. It is, it's so unique. It's so, it's such like an impossible mixture of ingredients. You don't even know, actually, and, and it's true that they don't know exactly how mole was invented. It's like a, it's a very mysterious, amazing flavor. You can taste the chocolate, you can taste the chilies, you can taste the nuts in there, it has a nutty taste. It's, it's really rich. Wow, it's, 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 it's phenomenal. Oh, look at that. Oh, the sauce, it's really all about the sauce, but chicken is just like a, is just the, the, the second ingredient in this dish. I have to taste a bite of chicken before I even move on to any, any carb form. A mucha insistencia, poca la resistencia. Muy, muy bueno. Sí. Qué rico. Muy rico. Wow. Yeah. That's stunning. And, and again, the sauce, I mean, the sauce is so incredibly flavorful that all it needs to do is coat the chicken. It doesn't need to like permeate into the center of the chicken. I gotta get a bit more sauce though on there. That's remarkable. Just, oh, hold on, let me just make this a Okay. You want to be on? Carlos and Annette, how's the mole? Annette? Delicious. <laughs> Carlos. <clears throat> ¿Qué pasó? Unique, special. Very different than any mole that I've tried before. Very good. By the way, she she re refilled my sauce. This mole sauce is just blowing my mind right now. They've also made us a plate of chapulines, which are grasshoppers. And grasshoppers are very, very common in Oaxaca. Uh, you'll find them at the market. Uh, they said they get they harvest these grasshoppers sometime in November, October or November, when that, that's grasshopper season. But then they save them all. Uh, so they have a continual supply of grasshoppers throughout the year. Oh, oh wow. Oh, those are just fantastic. Oh, that's an entire mouthful of grasshoppers. They're kind of crunchy. They have, I think they're cooked with some salt and lime because the flavor is amazing. Oh, those are beautiful. I love it. Oh, with that sauce, mole, chapulines. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm gonna add on a little more mole sauce onto this grasshopper. Oh. That's an outstanding combination too. I like it with the grasshoppers, that gives it a crunch. That chicken just falls off the bone. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna add this to my rice and I've got one combination that I need to try. I mean, I love it with the tortillas, but with rice, ah, I mean, I am, I am Asian, I love rice. It's so good with rice. Oh. This sauce is just insane. Okay, they also have one of mom's homemade salsas here. And I've seen Javier, he is adding some of the salsa to his mole, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow. Oh, wow. There's nothing better than adding sauce to sauce. Okay, and then finally, I gotta go in for some of those chapulines. Sprinkle those on top. Let me add one more grasshopper for the final topping. And there it is, that is possibly the greatest single bite of mole in the entire world. And that completes the mole. That was an absolutely stunning meal. Do I have any grasshoppers stuck in my teeth? 
Uh, I don't think so, I just have a chocolate mustache. Uh, a mole mustache. Oh man, that was so incredibly good. Uh, I loved the mole. I loved this entire experience. And when we set off this morning, we had no idea what we were gonna do actually. We, had, we didn't have plans, all we wanted to do was eat wanted to find and search out some of the best mole. And it was an incredible success, uh, but thanks to the family here, I wanna say a huge thank you to Javier, who is our driver, uh, because he, he graciously thought of this idea and then he called his mom, his mom agreed, and they graciously invited us into their home, which is, uh, it's incredible. I, I've said it many times before, but this is another one of those experiences that is worth traveling across the world. There's nothing like an experience like this when it comes to food and travel, and I'm extremely grateful to have this opportunity. So again, huge thank you to the family. We are all very happy and full of mole now, and we're, they're, they're gonna give us some of that mole paste to bring home with us. Okay, I'm gonna, before I, I'm a little bit under the influence of mole right now, so I'm gonna quit talking. And I want to say a huge thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. If you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now. I'm going to be sharing lots more videos like this and food tours and travel videos. Uh, and also click that little bell icon so that you don't miss the next video that I publish. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next video.